Hey guys, it's Leanna and I'm here today to talk about Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. You all laughed when I said I was going to read another Naomi Novik book because I hated the first two that I read. I hated Uprooted and I hated Deadly Education, but I loved Spinning Silver. So, ha ha, ha 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 ha. This book did it right. <laughs> this book was exactly what I had wanted and hoped to get out of Uprooted. And Uprooted, if Uprooted had been like this, I would have loved it. Like I complained so much about how Uprooted was trying to be this like fairy tale esque thing and totally missed the mark. It didn't have the atmosphere, it didn't really have this like ancient folkloric feel like it seemed to think that it would or, or wanted to try to have. Uh, I don't know what happened between her writing Uprooted and her writing this, but she got it right. She figured out how to do it. <laughs> and unlike Uprooted where we follow like one perspective throughout and, and it's an insufferable perspective, we follow many, many, many perspectives in Spinning Silver, almost too many. like. Almost. It wasn't too many, but it was it was close to too many. And but the the interweaving of different versions of the Rumpelstiltskin story and how she retold it and re-retold it and re-re-re-retold it and complexly layered the retellings and interwove the retellings into each other. It was glorious. And it was so feminist without being ham-fisted or soapboxy. The characters were complex and nuanced while still having this kind of like distant archetypal fairy tale quality. There were some romantic elements, but it was at no point a romance. I was the, there were a few instances where having read Uprooted, I was like, oh God, if this turns into a romance, no. But it never did that. It like kind of hinted at that and teased at it, which was just enough any more than that. And it would have been shitty. I, I felt like it had this ancient folkloric feel which I really, really, really appreciated. So if you have read Uprooted and you hated it like me, do give Spinning Silver a go. Cause like I had been told that by multiple people, like, oh, I know you hated Uprooted, but I think you would still like Spinning Silver. And I was like, all right. Cause I mean, I own this edition. So I was like, okay. <laughs> and I did really, really like it. I really, really did. It had that like those earthy fairy tale vibes. It reminded me actually a lot of The Bear of the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. Uh, the story, no, but the, the vibes of it, the feeling of this kind of like earthy magic, it's kind of in everything, this magical realism kind of where it's not so much that this world has like a wizard in it. It's just that there's this like inherent magical quality to things that people just accept as part of everyday life. Like, well, of course there's spirits in the woods. Of course there are like evil magics that can make the winter come. Like that's just kind of the world. <laughs> and and it just feels very folkloric for that reason. Because like in fairy tales, it just kind of, it's just like the natural state of things. And it's a natural progression of events that, that a magical creature would pop up and offer our assistance. <laughs> You're like, well, that, that's fairy tale logic for you. And there was a lot of applications of like fairy tale logic where like, like what if the characters would their solution to something would be a fairy tale solution where like it doesn't make logical sense but it has that feeling of like tricking the fairy um which is kind of how Rumpelstiltskin is as a fairy tale where you're kind of tricking the the magical creature out of uh, you holding up your end of the bargain I did some interesting things to like point out biases and misconceptions and I guess kind of kind of racist things I guess um there's the sort of like the Jew money lender and how people like look down at that being dirty, but are ha more than happy to use the services and to borrow money. The role of women, the how women are able to carve out some kind of form of agency despite the world not really offering it to them. The way the magic of silver was used in it, I thought was very uh, filled with imagery. Like a lot of things in it, like I was really picturing like this really fantastical, beautiful fairy tale thing a lot of the time the way it was described. Like I was visualizing, visualizing a lot more with this than I have. I don't generally visualize very much when I read. I was visualizing a lot with this. So it really made me feel like I was like tumbling into this fairy tale world of snow and ice and silver and dark magics and feminism. <laughs> so I had a really great time with this. I really, really did. And like reading it in December was kind of the perfect time to be doing it. Um, I was listening to the audiobook, So I was actually cooking um, a meal for my friend for New Year's. Um, and I'm Latvian. So I was cooking like a lot of traditional Latvian foods while listening to it. And it just it was the perfect experience because like all the smells and foods around me, I was like cutting beets and I had cabbage on the stove and like all the smells around me. And then hearing this, this story about these, like the kind of housework they're doing, the kind of food they're eating, the whole thing. I was just like, oh, this is like the perfect time and space to be experiencing this. So that worked out quite nicely. <laughs> so yeah, and it is a standalone, which like, I mean, in generally speaking for fantasy is nice because you're not committing to like a whole series. This is it. And it's told exactly like, it's not too long or too short. It's the right length, tells the stories it, it means to tell, leaves some things hanging, but not in a way where you're like time for a sequel, just kind of like the nature of like life is never that conclusive. So leaving the threads open to like, you can imagine 
where these where these characters' lives will be going towards after the events of this book. You imagine a future for them, which is also very fairy fairy tale esque. The kind of like, and now they live happily ever after. Like it's not a cheesy ribbon on it, happily ever after ending, but it ties it up in a way where you're like, and now I see where their lives go on from here. So well done, well well done. <laughs> Let me know in the comments down below if you have read Naomi Novik's books and how you felt about them. Again, I I guess it just goes to show that just because you might hate an author's books does not mean you will hate all of that author's books. I feel like two different people wrote these books and I'm, I'm kind of glad I read it in this order because if I read this now I'd be like oh well then Uprooted will be great too and I'd be I was already quite disappointed based on the reputation that book had and based on knowing my own reading tastes and what should appeal to me but having now seen how well she can execute this I would be mega uber duper disappointed with Uprooted. A lot of people love both so let me know in the comments down below your feelings and thoughts about this type of storytelling, how authors can have a variety of types of story and they could appeal to different readers. Um, if you had a similar experience to me or a different, maybe you loved Uprooted and hated Spinning Silver. That's an option. I feel like if you really loved Uprooted, then you could very easily have the opposite taste of me. <laughs> anyway, let me know all the things. I post videos on Saturdays, other random times as well, but definitely Saturdays. So like and subscribe and I'll see you when I see you. Bye.